Hi, my name is Tom and I'm going to be talking to you today about the Google Fi service and the Pixel 2 phone. Um, if you're a traveler, either domestically or internationally, I think you'll find that these two products combined are your ideal travel companion. Um, our channel Life 4.0 is a travel blog. It's a blog about sailing and we go to some of the world's most beautiful and exotic locations on our boat. And uh, as bloggers, we're heavy users of data. But even if you're traveling on land or maybe you're in an RV or a camper or on a bike or something like that, um, when you're away from home, you definitely need uh, convenient, easy access to text and data and to make phone calls. So, um, you know, if you're part of a corporation, employee of a corporation, you get a phone with them, it's pretty simple. You just go and travel, you don't worry about it. But if you're traveling on your own, and you, or if you have your own business, um, or like, you, like I said, if you're a travel blogger like we are, what do you do? Yeah. Um, if you're traveling domestically in the United States, you can, can certainly continue to use your local cell phone carrier. Um, this works fine, but if you're traveling out of the country, you have to check the fine print on your cell phone plan because likely you're going to be paying extra for taking that phone and that phone's plan overseas. In some cases, you'll pay a lot extra uh, to use your phone. So we use Verizon here in the United States, and um, if you just jump on a plane and travel abroad, you're going to be paying about $3 a minute for a voice call, uh, $0.25 cents for texting in and out. And uh, for data, you're going to pay a whopping $250 to up to $2,000 for a gigabyte of data. So all of a sudden, your unlimited plan domestically in the United States is going to cost you a lot. Um, so a couple options that you have when you travel overseas is um, you can buy a local SIM card. And you'll see these all over the place in airports when you land. Um, it works, but it's a hassle. You have to go to a vending machine or go to a store. Um, it's in a foreign country, foreign language. You have to read the fine print in a foreign language. And it's really often difficult to find out truly what your data plan is that you're getting, like how much you're getting, where you're covered in, in that area, whether it's just that country or in adjacent countries, and at what speed are you getting that data for. Um, if you run out of your data, then you have to re-up your plan, which means calling or going on uh, their website and figuring out how to do that. You have to also make sure that the phone you're using, that you're putting this local SIM card in, is unlocked. And that's not always the case. Um, in the US, if you get your phone through a carrier, um, you have to, it stays locked until your contract period ends. Um, and other things related to the particular phone you have, um, it may have a bandwidth that is uh, applicable for your country, but not applicable for the major bandwidths that cellular coverage is provided in the foreign country. Um, so an example of that in Europe is the carrier Orange. Um, you know, they have, you can get a local SIM card from them. Um, it costs, in one example, it costs 40 euros for that SIM card and you get about two hours of voice calls, a thousand texts, and 10 gigabytes of data. So it doesn't seem too bad for 40 euros. Um, but if you read the print, the fine print, it's only valid for 14 days. So, you know, if you're traveling for a short period of time, no big deal. Um, but if you're doing more extensive travel, then you're buying, you know, at least two of those cards per month. And um, that's kind of not the greatest deal. Another option is you can rent a phone in the country that you're visiting. Um, but this often has the same issues of buying a local SIM card with the added challenge if you've got additional cables and uh, chargers and you, and you got to return the phone back to the uh, carrier uh, after your travel's done. Um, and then the challenge is what if you have multiple devices? So if you've got multiple devices that need internet access, say a laptop or a tablet, um, what do you do? Uh, you know, you can use your phone as a mobile hotspot. Uh, but a lot of carriers will limit your speed of that service to something equivalent to about a 2G speed, which is excruciatingly slow if you're used to 4G or 4G LTE. Um, this, by the way, is an issue domestically in the United States as well. Uh, I would say most carriers that I'm familiar with 
do throttle your speed on a hotspot unless in some cases you can pay an extra premium fee to get faster speeds at, on your phone as a hotspot um, otherwise you're stuck with 2G speeds which is really only usable maybe for email and texting but not really for true browsing or YouTube work or Facebook work um, another option is you can buy a hotspot a mobile hotspot so um, it's like buying a phone but it's another device and you need to get a sim card for that mobile uh, hotspot and then you tether your phone and your laptop and so on to that but you know you got your cost for that mobile hotspot and again you got to get an additional sim card and figure out what the appropriate plan is for that and when you run out of data on that plan you have to re-up and all that um, so it's not the greatest option um, if you're a boater or an RVer, um, there are certain custom solutions that uh, vendors that sell things out there like long-range Wi-Fi antennas to pick up open Wi-Fi in certain areas. Um, there's also a solution that we've used on our boat in the past called the Wiry. Um, it combines both Wi-Fi and cellular service. Um, we've had mixed success with it. It's an expensive product and we had a lot of difficulty getting a SIM card to work in it. Um, and to truly get LTE speeds out of it. Um, and then the additional challenge is that it's fixed to your boat or your RV, so if you're traveling somewhere else on land, uh, you can't take it with you. So, you know, we all have increased needs for um, internet access and keeping in touch with family and friends back home. Um, these are pressing issues for anyone that travels regularly, uh, particularly for travel bloggers, people traveling like us on boats or RVs. Um, or anybody just on the road for whatever reason away from your home. So um, I think a great solution out there is this Project Fi and Pixel 2 phone. So they're, they're both provided by Google. Um, it's a relatively new service, Project Fi from Google, and the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL, two choices of phones there, um, are options for you from Google. So first talk to you about Project Fi. So again, it's an offering from Google. Um, it's a unique phone plan in the sense that it integrates service from three major US carriers. So those carriers are Sprint, T-Mobile, and US Cellular. Um, so when you use your phone uh, with Project Fi, it's connecting to whichever one of these three networks is the best service in your area. Um, so combine again with uh, Project Fi and your Pixel 2 phone, I think you've got a pretty powerful travel companion there. Um, in, again, if you're in the U.S., you get the best coverage between those three carriers, um, and it automatically switches between Wi-Fi and cellular service. So it's going to prefer Wi-Fi. Um, if you're um, in your home or a coffee shop or hotel or airport and you connect to the local uh, Wi-Fi service there. Your phone's going to use that service and um, it's going to be more economical for you. If you're out of range of Wi-Fi, um, it uses again any one of those three carriers for, for voice, for text, and for data. Um, and in the U.S. what you do is you pay, well you pay a base Project Fi uh, cost. It's, th it's $20 a month. And that covers you for unlimited voice and text service in the US. And you pay then for a fee for your data usage. Um, so more and more carriers in the United States are going to this option of using Wi-Fi, connecting your phone to Wi-Fi, and then you can make phone calls over Wi-Fi. Um, it's kind of like an add-on service in my mind to a lot of these carriers. They don't really, it's not well integrated. Um, you have to go into the phone, the settings, and find the place to select uh, calling over Wi-Fi. And in our experience, the call quality is uh, not the greatest. You get dropped calls. You get a lot of, um, sometimes the call will come and go, and then it'll reconnect. And it's just not a very seamless solution. Um, everything we've seen with Project Fi is that it actually is a really well-integrated solution. It's automatically connecting to Wi-Fi networks that you've already specified, or um, about one million secure Wi-Fi hotspots that Google has identified and verified for you. So you have a lot of options there. Um, when you're using data away from a Wi-Fi connection, there is a charge, as I mentioned. Um, it's $10 per gigabyte. 
Um, and the nice part about that though is that you're not locked into a specific amount of data uh, per month. So you're not signing up for a six gigabyte plan or eight gigabyte plan and paying for that up front. You only pay for what you use. If you use one gigabyte of data, you pay $10. If you use 1.4 gigabytes of data, you spend $14. So it's very easy and straightforward. Um, now, if you're outside of the U.S., you're using Project Fi um, on a Wi-Fi connection. It's normal, it's same as if you were in the U.S. Um, Project Fi has relationships with cell phone carriers in other countries, 170 countries to be exact. And when you're not in the range of Wi-Fi, it's connecting to those cellular uh, carriers for you. So there you go. You don't need to sign up with those other carriers. You don't need to get a local SIM card. You don't have to figure out how that works or plug it in or whatever, set it up, initiate it. Um, it's all handled seamlessly with the service. And I could just stop right there. I think that's probably the biggest benefit of Project Fi is that you're overseas. You don't have to futz around with dis different SIM cards and data plans and all that. It's all handled seamlessly. You pay $10 uh, a gigabyte and um, you get all the other services there. So if you're... Um, it talked about the ten dollars per gigabyte for data. Um, you also, when you're overseas, you have unlimited texting, so you can text and there's no additional charge other than that twenty dollar base cost per month. Um, that's whether you're on Wi-Fi or cellular. If you make a voice call overseas, um, it's a reasonable amount. You pay uh, t just twenty cents per minute uh, for each minute you're on the phone, um, whether you're on cellular or Wi-Fi connection. Um, and if you're using data, you're, um, if you're on Wi-Fi, there's no charge for that. Again, if you're on a cellular connection and you're using data for browsing, Facebook, what have you, you pay that same amount of $10 per gigabyte. Hotspots. So when you use your phone with Project Fi and you turn on the hotspot, um, you, uh, the good news is there's no throttling. You don't have to deal with this 2G speed thing with other carriers, you get the full speed of that phone. So if your phone is, say, getting 30 megabits per second speed for browsing on your phone, you hotspot uh, another device to that, say a laptop, and um, your laptop is getting that same 30 megabits per second speed. That is a huge benefit and one benefit we're gonna definitely take advantage of. Um, especially if you're a heavy data user and you're uploading content or downloading videos and all that. Um, so that's the service Project Fi. So I'm, now I'm going to switch over to actually the phones themselves. So this is the Pixel 2 phone from Google. Um, as I said, they also make a Pixel 2 XL, which is slightly bigger. This Pixel 2 is a, about a 5-inch diagonal screen. It's very similar to an iPhone 6S, which was uh, my previous phone, similar size screen. Um, the XL is a step up from that in size. Um, so you have a, a limited number of choices of phones that you can use the Project Fi service with. Um, they are all Android phones, so if you're an iPhone user like I was in the past, you're going to need to learn uh, the world of, of Android. Um, but I think, you know, again, there's a number of phones available. Um, the Pixel 2 phone, I think, is an attractive choice if you're looking to go down this road, uh, particularly for boaters, because um, it does have a waterproof rating, uh, IP67, which means that it's waterproof down to one meter for 30 minutes. Super helpful thing if you're out in the rain or you happen to drop your phone in the water, uh, just catch it before it sinks below one meter and you're, you're all good. Um, the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL phones have arguably one of the best cameras out there. Uh, very good camera quality. They do a lot with different color settings and um, low light uh, av availability of uh, picture taking. And um, it's also coupled with Google's now offering an unlimited uh, photo and video storage in the cloud. So you take as many pictures as you want, you upload them to uh, Google's, the Google Photo site, and you not only have easy access to it from other devices, but you've got unlimited storage there. So that's a great benefit. Um, the Pixel 2 phone also has something called an eSIM. So there's not a physical SIM card you're putting in. Um, it's kind of like a built-in hardware SIM card. And um, so there's no fumbling around with SIM cards. Uh, you, when you order the phone, you, you, know, you select eSIM. And so it's already set up with a phone number for you. 
Um, there is a slot, a SIM card slot on the side of the phone, so if you do want to use a little SIM card, um, you can, and that's an option. Like, I've taken a SIM card out of our uh, a phone I was using with Verizon, and with a Verizon SIM card, you pop it in the little nano SIM card slot, and you select Verizon as your carrier, and now you're using your Verizon SIM card, your Verizon phone, um, your Verizon data plan, and all that. So you can switch back and forth between Project Fi and another carrier's SIM card if you really, really want to, or you can just ditch that whole idea and just use Project Fi. Um, so, kind of, you know, to recap, I would say, you know, a couple of the main things that are sticking out there again is the the pricing. It's very straightforward pricing. You pay twenty dollars per month as a base cost, which gets you that unlimited texting and, and uh, voice calls in the U.S., and then you pay ten dollars per gigabyte for data. You, know, you get you hear a lot of hype from other carriers about um, this thing going on, this special going on. It's it, it's you know, buy now, get another phone free kind of thing. You don't really know oftentimes what you're getting on these specials and you might get a special deal per month but then it expires and you're paying a whole lot more um, ongoing. So I, I love that sort of straightforward pricing plan. Um, in, you might be able to find data cheaper for at other carriers than this $10 per gigabyte but you have to count counter in the fact that uh, you're buying sort of a max plan so you're saying okay I'm not going to go over 8 gigabytes and that's the plan I'm going to buy with XYZ carrier. Um, but in reality, you're going to be using something lower than that. You're kind of, you're picking a data level that you know you're not going to exceed because the exceeding that is a huge cost from those other carriers. With this plan, you know, if you one month, you don't really use any data, you don't really pay much. If you use two gigabytes, you pay 20 bucks uh, for that data. So it's again, very straightforward. They do have a max level that you cap out at for the data um, charge. So for an individual person, you um, if you use six gigabytes or therefore are charged sixty dollars for that data, you cap out at that level. So if you use more than six gigabytes, you're not going to pay anything more for your data. So that sixty dollars plus the base cost of twenty dollars, you're looking at a maximum of eighty dollars per month. So again, I think that was um, a, a nice approach by Google to do that. Um, if you add any additional people to your plan, it's it's fifteen dollars base cost per month instead of the twenty normally. So those, you know, a couple nice things there for pricing. Again, no throttling on the on the mobile hotspot. I loved that fact. Um, you, um, you know, one thing we didn't really talk about earlier, but when you buy a local SIM card in another country, you're getting a local phone number. If you buy it in France, you're getting a local French uh, phone number that people, you know, you have to provide to people, and they have to call you on that number. With Project Fi, you're, you've got one number, and so if you um, if you buy it in the U.S., you've got a U.S. number. Your friends, your family, they call you on that U.S. number, and it's going to ring you wherever you your phone is in the world. Very helpful thing. You got one number for people to remember to reach you at. Um, overseas again, you've got this per minute reasonable per minute cost for phone calls. Um, and um, apparently there are some ways that I've heard online that people have talked about about using other ways of making calls like using Google Hangouts and you're calling over your data service not your voice service so if you really want to even save more money on voice calls overseas um, you can use you might try using Google Hangouts um, you know all this stuff I talked about internationally I think actually you know Project Fi is actually a good service for you domestically as well in the US um, again, being able to select one of those three carriers and having service that kind of the best of, of all three of those carriers. Um, we, you know, we talked about the, um, the service and all that with Project Fi, the fact that there's no, there's no contracts or agreements, you just pay as you go. Um, you can actually put your service on hold or pause as well. Um, I haven't really seen that available with other carriers, so that's kind of nice. Um, and actually, they, they also have a nice app on the phone, so you can pull it up on your phone and look at how much data usage you have. Um, it's actually one of the nicer apps. I've seen other apps from other carriers, and this one, I think, is a lot better. Um, again, recapping on the waterproof ability, great fact if you're a boater or you're outside a lot. Um, so, you know, it's not a perfect world. There are some downsides. I think, again, if you're an iOS user, uh, iPhone user, um, you're going to need to learn Android. But I think you'll find, in my case, I found just pretty much all the apps that I was using on my iPhone are available in the Google Play Store. Um, certainly the look and feel of an Android phone is a little bit different, but actually you have a lot of customization capabilities on an Android. 
Um, the other downside is there's, is there's only a few phones that work right now under Project Fi, uh, but I do think you have some good choices there, in particular this Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL, a great phone. Um, again, great, great camera quality and a lot of other things to it. Um, the other, I guess the third downside I would say is the service with Project Fi is, although it has three carriers that it picks from, um, none of those carriers are great in more rural areas uh, in the country, in the U.S. Uh, we're right now in the rural part of Maine, and uh, it really doesn't work very well. I can, I can make voice calls, but I have really no texting or, or data service. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to be using it domestically. If you're in an urban area, no problem. You'll get great speeds and great service. But if you're live in a more rural area or travel in a more rural area, you, um, you might need to rethink your plan there. Um, so, you know, our experience so far, my experience has been um, it's super easy to set up. If you're already a Google user, um, use Gmail perhaps or Chrome, um, maybe use Google Contacts or Google Photos, you'll find that um, the Project Fi service and also the Google phone is really well integrated for, um, for you as a, as a heavy Google user. Um, if you're transitioning from an iPhone to an Android, they also, when you buy the phone, they also provide you a cable and a lot of helpful hints to migrate all your information over your contacts and all that kind of stuff over from your iPhone to your uh, Pixel phone. So that's kind of, kind of it. I think it's a great solution for uh, international travel and uh, if you're a heavy data user. We'll certainly update our blog site with our experience. Right now, uh, I've just been testing it in the U.S. So, um, you know, the real, the, the, the rubber meets the road when we're overseas and we're using it heavily uh, over cellular service and for Wi-Fi, but we'll definitely update our blog experience there. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you, um, I look forward to your feedback on the video. If you have used Project Fi and or the Pixel 2 phone overseas, I'd love to see your comments, hear your feedback on that, or if you have other solutions that you've found that are helpful for international travel and data usage, I'd love to hear that too. So look forward to your comments. Thank you very much.